Gambling is not about how well you play the games. It's really about how well you handle your money. That's not us saying. This is from poker player VP Pappy. In India, gambling is a state subject. The states are entitled to formulate laws for gambling activities within their boundaries. Talk about boundaries in Northeast India. Meghalaya is now trending in the news, not because of the upcoming assembly elections in 2023 or yet another Congress leader joining some other party. This time for casinos. Mind you, the state is not unfamiliar with betting. It is a hub for tea lottery, an archery-based lottery game regarded as one of the most prominent lotteries in Northeast India. The event is organized by the Khasi Hills Archery Sports Association and is held at the Polo Ground in Shillong. It is governed by the regulations of the Meghalaya Amusements and Betting Tax Act 1982. Tea is, however, different from lottery. Unlike a lottery where the winners are decided through a lucky draw, in tir the winners are determined by the number of tirs or shots. For the record, this is not a video on tir cheat codes. Instead, we are trying to understand if Meghalaya is trying to become the Las Vegas of Northeast India. I am Megha Thakuria, and you are watching Decoded. Assume for what? The village of Assam. In the 75th Independence Day. India is not a gambling friendly country. Gambling is illegal in India except for Goa, Sikkim and Daman. Goa has allowed gambling since the formation of the Goa, Daman and Diu Public Gambling Act 1976. Small amendments were made to it by the government of Goa after which table games like poker and roulette were permitted to be played on cruise ships. Goa is the smallest state in India and needless to say it is a tourist hotspot and the main revenue for the state is from tourism 16 casinos operate in goa 6 offshore and 10 onshore in the financial year 2018 2019 the government of goa collected rupees 411 crore in revenue from onshore and offshore casinos till january 2021 casinos contributed to about rupees 1200 crore to the state The revenue generated by all the casinos on account of the annual recurring fees has been assessed at rupees 320 crore for the financial year 2022-2023. Since February 2020, Goa residents have been barred from using casinos. This however did not have any impact on the revenue generated, but the COVID-19 restrictions did. Delta Corp which operates casinos in Goa and Sikkim reported a loss of rupees 28.93 crore between April and June 2021. The company holds 3 of the 6 offshore gaming licenses issued in Goa, one land-based casino in Goa and one in Sikkim. Enough about casinos in Goa. Now let's move on to the fourth Indian state that is pushing the idea forward. Meghalaya. The Meghalaya government might have passed the Meghalaya Regulation of Gaming Rules in December 2021, but the process of legalizing gambling, online gaming and online betting was already initiated in February last year when the Meghalaya Regulation of Gaming Ordinance 2021 was passed. This ordinance basically nullified the Meghalaya Prevention of Gaming Act of 1970 because of which you could end up in legal trouble for gambling. Nature waterfalls, excursions, stargazing, cultural tours, sporting events, name it, and Meghalaya has it all to satisfy your sabbatical. The state is a huge tourist magnet, as a result of which it was no surprise that Meghalaya's annual tourism revenue dipped from rupees 20.89 crore in 2019 to rupees 3.48 crore in 2020 the covid-19 pandemic ravaged the tourism sector in meghalaya ps pre covid-19 the state earned rupees 24.77 crore in 2018 from tourism 
so it should not come as a surprise if the state government is trying too hard to revive the economy with luxury tourist attractions such as casinos type we can get away from guwahati and nongpo umiam dauki and shillong will surely be among the top 10 destinations Resorts and eateries in Nongpo are dependent on such we can get away for revenue from Guwahati folks. The government in a way is trying to implement the same model for the casinos. Am I right or am I right? The Kasi Jaintia Christian Leaders Forum has signaled a red flag for gambling and here's what Reverend Kargongar, secretary of the forum had to say about the forum's decision our concern is because of the immoral aspect of this it affects the morality the character of the citizens of the state from individuals to families number 2 is that a person who is engaged in gambling or a problem gambler studies have shown that there are several de- detrimental affects detrimental impacts you know affecting the individual's health uh his health his mental health one's uh-huh. mental health and it also leads to uh criminal activities there there are possibilities of criminal activities coming affecting the individual affecting the family affecting the society in different ways We also have this one resident of Shillong who has very strong opinions about gambling tea Las Vegas and somehow Thailand. Tea which is a very traditional practice is a very like from very ancient days. I mean like if there is no profit in this tradition practice you know this thing it won't continue also. But because there is some profit people could do a little gambling on this that's why till today it is still existing. I mean if there's no profit it won't be existing anymore. even like we speak suppose about tourism in the case if tourism doesn't bring any profit nobody will take interest to maintain tourism and all so this tier also because it bring profit you know to some people so i feel like till here is more than enough for us to have this thing but gambling uh, like really please forgive me i don't want gambling in the state you also said that you're scared that you don't want make halia to be another la- las vegas here that's very true that that's very true because like you know when it come to gambling you know like any we have seen uh like las vegas what is the i mean uh, the the situation it is called like it is not like what sin city see even i don't want to long to be another thailand which is what they call the sixth capital of asia i don't want meghalaya to be one of this situation in meghalaya you know chief minister conrad sangma however assured the forum that several restrictions will be put in place for the locals to protect the cultural integrity of meghalaya But with the upcoming Meghalaya Assembly elections in 2023, the NPP government might be in deep water if the opposition CTMC opposes the idea of casinos and starts sloganeering against it. Chief Minister Conrad Sangma held a meeting with the group of ministers on casinos to discuss issues related to GST, and this is what he had to say. Suppose you go into a casino, um, you know, while you are in there, is it? Uh, based on the chips that you buy is it based on the number of times you play the chips that you've bought so that could be 10 times so if you bought 100 rupee chips and you play 10 times it becomes 1000 so are you charged on 1000 or on 10 rupees then after that when you inside there you eat food or you take different services like maybe you might have a drink so is that going to be taxed also along with that on the 28% or 18% or will it be on the excise uh, so all these complications are there in this entire thing and the gst council decided and felt that Uh, there should be a GOM that handles this because uh, you're talking of almost close to a turnover of forty thousand, fifty thousand crores that will be affected by the decision that this GOM takes. Just like Goa, the residents of Meghalaya will not be allowed to participate in any gaming activity inside the casinos. But the last time we checked, people in Meghalaya have friends in other states. If you know what I mean. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to East Mojo. For any queries, put them down in the comments section below and press on the bell icon for notifications.